Hi everyone, Elite Assassin here. And today I'd like to talk to you guys about E3 and specifically Halo 5. Now I want to dedicate one video to Halo 5 just because of all the information we got this week. I kind of wanted to just give my thoughts on it. I know there's been tons of videos about the news. I'm not going to be sitting here blind about everything, but just kind of my thoughts about what it means for Halo 5. What it means for what we're going to see come Monday. And just his overall thoughts about lore and where they're going and if they maybe did a little too much this week. Besides that, I'm going to have another video about all the other games of E3 and what I'm expecting. So expect a video out today and a video out tomorrow on that. I'm trying to crunch those last minute E3 videos in there. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Alright, Halo 5. This week we got an unexpected and an insane amount of information, at least to me for pre E3, it was quite a bit, a lot more than I was expecting. Now if you know from my video a little bit back, I've been extremely happy with the Hunt the Truth series, and I really do look forward to it ending this weekend. Really Hunt the Truth was one of the very few reasons I was hyped for Halo coming into E3. I knew the campaign was going to be good. We played the arena style beta. And I'm excited for Halo 5. But I wouldn't necessarily say I was hyped leading up to it. You know it's funny. A year ago we were all so excited. I was so hoping that we were going to get Halo 2 Anniversary. With a remastered campaign. And a completely remastered multiplayer. And I was very put off by the idea of the Master Chief Collection. I was funny looking back on my, one of my videos saying that, you know, I didn't know how they can make it work. And it's sad to know that I was right. Because <laughs> it, it didn't. It was a lot of work and, you know, we all know what that was. But, you know, what happened with Matthew Collection is a very big reason as to why a lot of people maybe aren't that hyped about Halo or really hyped about Halo at all coming in 83. And I can't blame them. I mean, we haven't, we haven't seen 343 deliver on a fully functional game yet. Some people might say Halo 4 worked, just had bad settings. Not true. I'm going to deduct points for the file share system being broke for a while. Because it's worked with every other Halo game we've had at launch. Maybe not worked 100%, but at least it was there functioning. Now, they've been known to release the game without everything working 100%. And I'm, you know what, me and a lot of other Halo fans, I think we're kind of looking at 5 as, okay, show us what you got. I go into it with careful optimism. Very, very cautious optimism. From what they're saying, from what I saw from the beta, you know, I think they can make it work. I hope they can make it work. And I have a very positive outlook toward the fact that it is going to be fun. I thought the beta was enjoyable. The fact that it was all ranked definitely kind of hurt it in a sense to me. I know it turned off one of my friends. He absolutely enjoyed his first 10 matches. But once it became all ranked all the time, that's not the kind of game he likes to play. It's not the kind of player he is. He'd rather play the social than the ranked. So to him that really, really, truly turned him off. So, you know, there are things that I'm worried about, but at the same point in time, I enjoyed a lot of the additions. There are some things I would like to change. Some they did, some they didn't. But I'm going into it looking forward to it. This week, we were giving a whole bunch of information about the campaign. And the campaign was one of the parts I was really looking forward to, and everything they announced really just hit it out of the water. You know, I was talking to probably with Chris Spartan the other day, and he's like, you know, how hyped on a scale of 1 to 10 are you? And I'm like, I'm a 30. Because there are things that I always wanted in a Halo campaign since reading the books. Mostly being blue team in-game. They're there. And they're not just going to be there during co-op. They're going to be there the entire time. You know, there's going to be a lot of things told and personality grown just through the banter between them. These are Chief's oldest friends to people he's known since he was six years old specifically Kelly this is going to be neat because this is interactions we've never seen before 
These are the very few people who have known Chief since, well, before they, he was Chief. They knew the scared kid. And, you know, it's just going to be very interesting to see how they portray them, how they interact with them, and how they help the story come together. I was very happy to hear about how the campaign is going to be, just some of the things that we've heard. I'm not going to go into details in case people don't want to be supported on that information because I know some people didn't want to hear any of it. So I'm not going to go into, into details. We'll just say that it definitely seems like there's going to be more open, more roots, hidden weapon caches, and sometimes different ways to deal with the situation, even in the most linear of levels. There will still be branching paths and different ways to go about your levels and how you deal with battles, whether you sneak behind them or going guns blazing. And, you know, with the clan burn and all that, it definitely is going to add a much is needed sense of exploration and just all around fun sandbox to mess around with in campaign. Now, one of the big things that was announced was that there's going to be 20 plus maps released for Halo 5, which after seeing the beta and what they consider maps is the right number to have. And what I mean by that is one map consists of, let's say, truth. And regret is another map. So I would say that means we get about 10 or 11 base maps, 10 or 11 remixed maps, which as long as they're like a truth and regret, I'm okay with because truth and regret, though reworkings of each other, felt like completely different maps at times, especially aesthetically. Eden and... I forget what the other name of Empire were very close, but still different enough to warrant map slots. So if that's how it's going to be, cool, I'm all for it. And of course you have your Forge maps and your Forge canvases. All around, great news, I thought. That doesn't, that doesn't add to the fact that there's going to be 15 free DLC maps released by June of next year. This is both good and bad to me. Good because it's free. We'll have these maps. That's great. It specifically said map DLC was free. Because if they want to make armor sets and skins and charge for those instead of maps, I'm all for cosmetic stuff being some, t some of it being, you know, bought. That, to me, armor skins, weapon skins, well, I might actually generate more money than a map pack would because people like the cosmetic stuff. As long as people are going to be playing, that could bring in a decent amount of money. And you know, having free DLC maps means people might be might get tired of Halo 5, but hey, when the DLC comes out, it's free. Why not pop the disc back in and give it a shot? It'll bring people back, at least for a little bit, every time they release the DLC. Why it worries me? 15 by June. I want my Halo 5 to last a little bit. Halo 4 had a very short-term longevity plan. It didn't have long, it didn't have longevity. It, the DLC ended in about June. And that was going to be it, except for the championship bundle we randomly got. And luckily got. But the support of the game died really quick. I'm hoping for Halo 5 we don't see that. I hope that maybe there will be more DLC planned and if you know the player base stays with their free maps and they're getting good money maybe off of armor skins and stuff like that maybe they keep giving us a few more free maps if that's the case I'll be happy if we just kind of get 15 and that's it well we'll see how the community does after that but all in all the information we got was much more than expected and definitely makes things look bright you know, the free map thing definitely looks good for Halo. It looks like they don't want us to be divided in a player base because a big complaint of the fan base is, hey, I paid for these maps, I never get to play them. That's not a worry anymore. I just really hope that what we see the at E3 still blows us away. Again, 
there's a lot of cautious optimism when it comes to 343 and how they handle Halo. We'll have to see. You know, it's there's a lot of communities of Halo. That's one of the great things about Halo is how diverse the communities are in this for this series. You're never gonna make people 100% happy in any one community, but it looks like they're definitely trying. I'll give them that. The lore fans, like myself and all the people, will love the additions. I hope they can. Hope they can get over the hump that Halo 4 had. Because if you want a book reader, specifically of the Forerunner saga, Halo 4 is rough. To understand what was going on, who the librarian was, who the didact was. If you didn't go out of your way on Waypoint to watch the terminals, it was a bit to overcome. So I hope they introduce Blue Team and try to make people understand what's going on a little bit better in game. But overall, I think they're going down the right path of this game. I know for a lot of people, they're going to have to show up, you know, go big and have a very strong launch to show people and get some hope back in Halo and in, in them. The way it's going, things looking up. Good decisions on what they've announced for the most part so far. A big gripe from Halo 4 is also being rectified. Flag dribbling is back. Just announced, I believe, today. That's awesome. But they're keeping the flag number they added. So, we'll see how that works. Overall, I think there's reason to be optimistic going into 3 with Halo. Reason to look forward to it and reason to be excited. I hope everybody, you know, gives what Microsoft and 343 show a fair glance. Look it over with you know, hopefully not too judgmental of a view. Try going with an open mind. And hopefully we'll all be having good talks come later Monday afternoon and after we learn about what they're going to be showing us. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll be back in, in a little bit with my video on the other games of E3 I'm looking forward to. And I, you know, I want to know, what are you guys looking forward to for Halo 5? Were you happy with the information we got? You know, what made you most excited? You know, I'm really looking forward to you guys' responses, so feel free to leave some down below, and I'll see you guys later.